Hello, everyone, and welcome to the It's in Queens podcast. This one is covering uh, events in the borough between April 20th and April 25th, uh, 2018. Uh, as always, I am Rob Mackay, the director of the Queens Tourism Council, and the borough's best wingman is to my left, Chris Donovan from, uh, well, from the Daily News. He's also the co-producer of the podcast. Chris, please tell our podcast consumers how you are. <laughs> I'm well. Okay. <laughs> how was your weekend? It was a good weekend. I had a busy weekend. Did you stay in Queens? I did. Uh, we uh, Friday night was District 25, which is the school district my son is in. It was their night at uh, City Field. Oh. So we got to go on to the field. So before. you watched the Mets? We watched the Let's Mets. Go, Mets uh, they, go. they won that night. That would against be the Milwaukee. first place Mets, I the believe. First place Mets. Ah. Um, we were on the field for the National oh, Anthem. Oh, nice. Got some cool pictures with his uh, buddy from school. He did a uh, Facebook Live video. You know, my Your son's son? a social media star. Okay. Okay. As you know, he's six years old. Oh, yeah, six. yeah. Please don't say that in front of him again. That's, okay. Yeah, that was a he point was of contention last time. Say, yeah, good point. Um, <laughs> good point. So yeah, it was a good time. And then um, Saturday we were in Astoria for some lovely brunch, oh, and uh, then right. hit a couple of parks. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so it was wow, a big Queens that, weekend. That is a good Queens weekend. It was. Um, and as you can see, I am actually doubly blessed oh. uh, with with my wingmen today. Uh, to my right is Sammy Abu Shemez from Flushing Town Hall. Um, Sammy is definitely the definition of a special guest. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> I'm special. He's yes. very special. <laughs> um, Sammy is a, he's a very interesting guy, talented musician, and he also happens to be... Now, let me get this straight. Are you the director of programs at no, Flushing Town I'm Hall? No, I'm deputy director. Deputy director. And have comma. almost nothing to do with programs. It's just deputy oh, director. Oh, deputy director. Okay. I do everything except programs. Oh, okay. Okay. Which is good because yeah. I'm an artist. There you yeah, go. <laughs> he's also a musician, but we'll talk about that later. First, Flushing Town Hall has a lot of good stuff this weekend, but one thing is actually a series, which is an ongoing series, and it is really, I've been there before, I've been, they've, how many years have you been doing this now? Uh, Global Mashups has been going on for, for I guess, four, well, this is the fourth time, but uh, we started in 2013. Okay, we okay. started in 2013. So, basically, two bands from two different cultures, one band plays, the other band plays, and then they both get together and jam together, right? That's right. So tell us, tell me, first of all, it's called Global Mashups. Tell me Global about the mashups. history of it and all that. Yeah, so we actually started the series in 2013. It was originally called Cultural Crossroads, uh, but then we just, we made a reboot in 2015 when we restarted it, calling it Global Mashups. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating series. Not only do we have these three music sets, we also offer dance classes before the concert. So uh, this Friday, we're going to have a fantastic show. It's Afrobeat meets Latin Boogaloo. So you come at 7 o'clock, you're going to get a dance lesson. And then at 7.30, another dance lesson. Uh -huh. And then the two bands will perform, and then they'll do a third set. And the two bands, one of them. So I grew up in New York uh, in the 70s and 80s, and there was this Boogaloo music. That's right. Uh, tell, this, and one of the band is now one of this bands that's going to play on Friday is one of the sort of Premier currently existing currently Boogaloo existing in New York. Dedicated to Boogaloo. That is Spanglish Fly. Yes. Yeah, and they're a really Fly. fantastic group. We've had them at Flushing Town Hall before as a solo act, uh -huh. uh, but they're coming back for this uh, global mashup. Um, they're fantastic. Uh, they're enough of a draw on their own, yeah. but when you add in that they're performing with the band from Fellow the Musical, and Fella... whose name is Chop and Quench is the name of the band, uh, that that's the first global mashup this Friday on April twentieth. And Fella is the Nigerian musician, right? Fellow is so Fella Kuti is really the musician who you might say started Afrobeat. He's the guy who brought, um, you know, he traveled to London in the sixties and seventies. He brought okay. jazz rhythms and jazz beats and combined them with African music, and he created this whole phenomenon uh -huh. of big jazz bands playing kind of an Afrobeat thing that went global. So his the the musical Fella. Uh, on Broadway was sort of commemorating him, and this is the band that was put together to reproduce his music. They're uh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's a nice pedigree. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, it, King Sunny Ade is another Nigerian mission. Uh, King Sunny Ade and his African beats. Is, is that the same genre? Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, I'm not a okay. super expert on Afrobeat, oh, okay. uh, but yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, 
in the last several decades, there's tons of groups. Uh -huh. I have a quick question. Sure. Would you consider Run DMC and Aerosmith the first global mashup? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Peanut butter and chocolate. But that's a really an American <laughs> mashup. That's, that's an American, American mashup, mashup yeah. though. That's the first um, time I heard rock and rap together. Really? That is true. That's the first time I heard. Um, I, would, I just want to say that Nigerian, what people don't realize is that Cuban music uh, has a lot of Absolutely. Nigerian influence. That's right. And so if you listen to any like Cuban salsa and stuff like that, you're hearing Nigerian and why, percussion. Why, basically. why is that? Uh, because the, the <laughs> slaves that went to Cuba were mostly Yoruba. Oh, and in fact, a lot right. of Cuban Spanish has Yoruba words in it. Okay. Well, you know what's so, I mean, it's very interesting you bring that up, Rob, mm -hmm. because one of the, the driving force behind the global mashups is, you know, we do a lot of cross cultural programs at Flushing mm -hmm. Town Hall. Sure. Uh, because our mission is really to bring people together from different cultures. Uh -huh. Sometimes the cross-cultural programs are very obvious, uh -huh. like when we do a Pan-Asian program. Mm -hmm. So we did uh, wedding dresses from India and China and oh, Korea, yeah. and right? Uh -huh. it, it makes sense, right? The point of the Global Mashups program was mm -hmm. to do something that is cross-cultural but that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. or it doesn't seem to make sense at the beginning. Uh -huh. You bring in really odd combinations. So the group that's going to be performing on the 4th, a Gucci brand from Haiti, the last time they were in Global Mashups, they did Haiti meets China. <laughs> we had Mexico meets Greece. Uh -huh. So right. a lot of unusual combinations. But what's really interesting is that we start with an unusual combination, uh -huh. and somehow there's always connections there. No, there. So you like point crossing, this out, yeah. Yeah. that there's an influence of, uh -huh. of West African music on Latin music, right? right? right. So that, right. that's going to come out in one way or another. We did our first global mashup, our very first global mashup in 2013 was India meets Brazil. Uh -huh. And when we did it, this man came up to our director, to Ellen, I was like, I can't believe you made this mashup from me. I'm Indian and my wife is Brazilian. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's Queens. So you know, so, is, yeah. so that's, again, right, it's, so, like, it's very much uh -huh. about Queens. And we so, found that with other things. People have been like, oh, yeah, well, this is a, you actually are reproducing uh -huh. our marriage. Right. That's amazing. That's, 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 that's it's not the only that, one. That is like, that's why we love Flushing Town Hall. Yeah. Thank like, you so much. It's like the epitome of everything that's great about Queens. You know. So anyway, Boogaloo, I would consider, to me, Boogaloo is sort of like a Puerto Rican Bronx it's uh, very Bronx. It's, like, yeah. it's kind of yeah. It's like from the Bronx in the 1970s and 80s. It's a lot of Spanish language influence, a lot, and that's and you know that's it's just great that it's mixing up with with Nigerian music. Um, so that's this Friday. Could you just quickly tell us the other? You're doing this monthly now. Yeah, we're do well. We're doing it's it's a couple times. Oh, um, we have two in May and two in June. So we have. The dates are April 20th, which is Boogaloo this meets right. Afrobeat. Yep. Uh -huh. uh, May 4th, which is Egypt meets Haiti. May the 4th. May, May the 4th be with you. Right. <laughs> May 18th, which is Mexico meets Guinea. Uh, That's interesting, too. Uh, yeah, June 1st, which is Balkans meets El Barrio. And June 15th, which is Texas meets Peru. <laughs> yeah, well, so Max. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. both so, but they're all they're all <laughs> Friday evenings, starting with the dance lesson at seven p.m. Uh -huh. and the concert at eight. Uh -huh. And the For dance lessons, each group gets each group own. exactly. Yeah. Each group yeah. has has some. They teach you a little dancing because one of the things that we want to do at Flushing Town Hall is open up the dance floor so people can not yeah. just sit and see the music, but get up and, and yeah. dance and have a fun time. Yeah. That's fantastic. I, I, you know, on the Texas meets Peru, you should have food too. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people tell us we should have food. Yeah, uh, if you want to offer to cater right. for us. <laughs> I'll cater for you. Anyway, I have been to these before, and they are fantastic. And this one right here is right up my alley, as you can tell, this Friday. Um, we're going to talk about stuff going on, The other, some of the other stuff this week. I hope that you, even though this is kind of competition, I hope that you'll That's chime okay. In We're very supportive know. of everything going on in everything Queens. Everything in Queens. We just want a big... Queens is a fantastic up. place to do yep. all the With, best entertainment and eating. Doubt. Without a doubt. On the planet. So that means, Chris... What you got, buddy? The next biggest... The next, probably the, the other big event that starts on Friday is the three-day tattoo convention. That's right, at yeah. Resorts World. At Resorts oh, World, yes. Yep. Maybe we should get maybe we should get Flushing Town Hall tattoos or F something. Oh, just FTH. FTH. FTH right on the shoulder. Um, Suns out, guns out. Now maybe. the only problem with that is it's no no minors are allowed. And right. I was gonna take. I have a daughter who is fourteen and she really, she's very interested in tattoos and I wanted to take her, um, but they're not allowed. Very is that like reverse father. psychology? Like I'll throw you into the tattoo. <laughs> exactly. Right? I, 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 I told you. I love your. Yeah. Daughter. <laughs> yeah. I just love him. <laughs> Did you meet him at the tattoo convention? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, no, uh, but this is more. First of all, there are 250 different artists from all around the world doing wow. all different kinds of styles. Yeah, if you get a chance, uh, take a look at the work, the art, yeah, the actual the artwork, artwork on the site. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, um, and it's also conferences, performances, music. It's more than it's more than a tattoo convention. Right. And if you remember, um, uh, Lakshmi Singh, who does a, uh, who's an Indian Guyanese woman who does a, her own TV show, she is going to be at the event and she's going to get a tattoo right there. So oh, she's she going to live broadcast. She's going to live broadcast herself getting a tattoo. Nice. So that's that's if that's not enough reason to go, I don't know what else. Um, <laughs> also, there's a couple of things going on that are kind of sign of the times. Mm -hmm. uh, this Sunday is Earth Day. Yes. Um, and uh, as a result, Queens responds. We've got a Cherry Blossom Festival uh, in the Cherry Blossom Grove in Flushing Meadow, Corona Park, right near the New York State Pavilion. That's a beautiful little area over yeah, there. Yeah, and that's going to be it. They've done it. They do it every year. Uh, the Cherry Blossoms will hopefully be in full bloom. Yeah, we've um, had a rough going. We had a there. rough going. Yeah, we've had a rough going. But it, it includes uh, Japanese drumming, uh, Japanese singing, Japanese dance, and, and a tea ceremony. Nice. Um, oh, and it's, it's outdoors. It is the 21st, which is Saturday at 11. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, it's nice. It's I nice. I kind of want to go with my family. They yeah, do it nice every event. year. Uh, people get really into it. Um, there are other, just keeping on that, that line there, uh, the Volker Orth Museum, our favorite, our one buddies. of our favorite historic yeah. houses in, uh, in, right Flushing. in Flushing, not to be confused with Flushing Town Hall, which is a historic house all by historic itself, right? building more It has landmark status. It does have landmark status. And, uh, P.T. Barnum was there once. Apparently. Frederick <laughs> Douglass did Frederick give a speech Frederick Douglass there. did give a speech. And it did, did it have the first jail ever, or... What do you mean the first jail ever? In New York City. It has a It, it has, has a jail, jail cell. I doubt it was the it's, first jail in New York City. Uh, we were only building in 1862. Uh, good, point. good point. I hope for I think a lot of people were incarcerated before sake. that. Okay, it still actually has a jail cell. You can actually <laughs> it see does, it. Yes. Um, there is a uh, cheese making event at the Queens Farm Museum if you want to learn how to make cheese. Um, and um, Queens Botanical Garden will have a big uh, Arbor Fest too. So well, that's, that's your, so that's your Earth Day. Outside in right? nature, after after being inside at the global mashup, um, those are a couple of your options. Um, the uh, the the other kind of big thing is Tony Orlando. Yeah, buddy. Uh, do you remember Tony Orlando? Not really. No. Are you too young for that? Tony Orlando was a Tony Orlando daughter was a huge. He had yeah. his own he variety had, show. He had tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Wasn't yeah, that oh, that's still, okay. that's, uh, that's still yes. like the the go to song for when troops yes, are coming yes, home. Yeah, yeah. You know, the yellow ribbons yep. of remembering when there's yep. troops overseas. Yes. So. Yep. Um, so he uh, he's going to be performing at the Queensboro Performing Arts Center. Uh, yeah. He will be going through his entire re uh, repertoire, which I believe started in the fifties. Um, yeah, he but, was uh, like a doo wop guy yeah, back then, right? He was yeah. a Tony wow. Orlando and Don and Don. Tony Orlando Dawn was more like was late a, 60s, was, 70s, yeah. like disco stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of fun. Yeah, it is. He's like a, he's like a entertainer. You know? know? Yeah, these guys that have been on the stage for 50 years, 50 they know years. how to treat it. He's he was always known for like his warmth on the stage. Yes, like, everyone would go to the 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 the, the, the concerts and say, oh. He was like making me feel comfortable. He was yeah. so. He, he's a native New Yorker too, I believe. Right? Yes, he is. Yeah. He is. Yeah, he is. Um, uh, so uh, beyond that, he we have... doesn't happen to be from Queens by the way. No, he, I think no, he's we, from yeah, Queens, yeah, we couldn't tie him in there. Yeah, so we're, we're not going to. We don't have to mention that. He's, he's uh, from. He's from, <laughs> he's from Queens North. Yeah, Queens West. West. He's from Queens Northwest. That's right. Northwest <laughs> Queens. Um, uh, so there was a journalist by the name of Jerry Van Dyke who was covering Afghanistan and was kidnapped by the Taliban. That's right. Uh, he wrote a book, right? Yep. Uh, for uh, 45 days, mm -hmm. and he wrote a book about it. He will be presenting on that at the Queen Central Y on April 23rd. That's during the day at 1.30 um, on a Monday. I might just have to escape uh, my job. I hope my boss isn't watching. <laughs> I want to buy the book. He'll be over there with the book, and he'll be signing it um, and all that. So that's pretty good. I um, saw him when he was uh, when he was on the first book tour. He was on um, uh, John Stewart, The Daily Show. Oh, he was yeah. on the Daily Show? Yeah, he was on The Daily Show. Oh, wow. actually, yes. could, I think you, I remember. Uh -huh. Yeah, you can look it up online. You can check it out. Right. And uh, he was he was like used to being in that area, that territory, and he was just used to working. He actually 
was in with the Taliban as far as like covering them. Uh -huh. uh, for, oh, he, he had contact. He had contact with them, and uh -huh. I think just something went wrong, and um, yeah, they said hold on to him. Uh -huh. He really thought he was going to die, which is well, that makes yeah, sense. Being so kidnapped. scary. Yeah. Yeah. I read the book by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez about people in Colombia being kidnapped, where he interviewed all of them and came together. The whole idea of the minute you get kidnapped, God, that's got to be a horrible feeling. It's like, Ooh. yeah. Right then, you don't know what's going to happen, and anything can happen if it doesn't go well. Um, uh, the Greater Astoria Historical Society, oh, I wanted yeah. to mention this. Yep. They are doing a series of movies, Hollywood big-time movies, mm -hmm. starring Astoria natives. That's right. Cool. Uh, and Christopher Walken, as everyone knows, grew up in Astoria. Walken Baker, right? <laughs> yep. 20, yep. 2913 Broadway. Yep. His parents had a bakery on Broadway. <laughs> we, we know too much about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was also in the classic movie, movie Catch Me If You Can. Yes. What came first, the movie or the phrase? I don't know. I'm going to go um, with the phrase. Yeah? You're yeah. going to go with the phrase? And they the took phrase. it? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the Greater Story Historical Society will screen it and then discuss it. They do that a lot. They show yeah. a lot of classical historical movies and then talk about it. Um, but this is something that's going to be ongoing, so we'll be talking about it more going forward, Good. hopefully. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, and uh, other thing I wanted to mention uh, before we get back to Sammy or any of yours is uh, um, is um, that there is a uh, a classical music concert for children oh. uh, at Forest in mm -hmm. Forest Hills Garden at the Church in the Gardens which is that beautiful oh, church yeah. on Ask Askan Avenue with the, yep. it's got it's got a whole wall of uh, of um, stained glass um, and uh, so this music is put together it's inspired by Igor Stravinsky's um, uh, composed piece called uh, L'histoire de soldat. How's my French? Story of a Better soldier. Bad. Uh, it's it, it's, uh, it's 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 it's, <laughs> it's classical music that tells the story of uh, it's it's a story about a European town where a little boy finds out there's a factory that's taking all the fresh air, mm -hmm. and the sun got mad and the sun in the sky, and uh, decided it wasn't going to shine anymore. And then he comes in and saves the day and brings sun back to the. Uh, to the to the town, um, so that's kind of a fun thing if you want to introduce kids like your six year old. There you go uh, to to classical music in a beautiful place. That uh, is a... With a in a fun environment. Um, do Do you have anything you want to add? Very quickly, yes. just New York Hall of Science. Um, they're doing a couple of cool things on the eighteenth. Um, they have these designers in residence, killer snails, uh -huh. and they are um, they they design video games and. Uh, board games and stuff like that. So they're going to teach you how to do that. They're taking it out of the lab and into the real world. They're going to teach you how to take your idea, develop it into an either a video game or a board game, and kind of run you through the whole steps in the process. So the Killer Snails is the name of the group of experts. Of experts, yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. Killer and then they snails. also... Killer Snails. Wow. Killer Snails, yeah. Uh, is there such thing as killer snails? Are, yeah, I mean, how do they kill snails? you? <laughs> <laughs> like they, they just move very slowly they, they must and then you just, on you while you're sleeping. And you just something. like watch them and you're so mesmerized that you get hit by a car. Probably. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's one of the methods. Uh, the other thing is they do, um, you know, they're the home of the Maker Fair, so a lot of their things are hands-on yeah, activities. Yeah, they do a lot of Maker So yeah. on the 21st, they're doing all kinds of free builds, like PVC pipe building, dowels and rubber bands, Legos and Zoobs, which are um, little, uh, little, like, plastic things that you build not like a lego but like a little bit different but mm -hmm. for hands-on activities and especially for a son like mine he's got uh, he does occupational therapies learning to strengthen his hands just great stuff for kids to do yeah the best way to learn is by doing it hands-on is the best way i would yeah. say i would say throw people throw them into the pool and they'll That's learn it. how to swim faster than than if you give them lessons um Sorry, did I? We're good. You? No, okay. we're good. Uh, man cannot live by global mashups alone. That's correct. <laughs> uh, it's good to know that Flushing Town Hall also has a tremendous uh, marionette theater going on. This yes, week, right. That's right. On the, Sunday, the story of Cinderella, um, and that is by the name of the group is the Tanglewood Marionettes. That's right. They are. Is that Tanglewood like up? Uh, Berkshires? I believe so, yeah. They're okay. based up in Massachusetts. I was, Yeah, that's, that's that got to be the Berkshires. So I was looking at some of the uh, photos on their Facebook page today of the marionettes. The marionettes are totally cool. Stunning. Oh, they're Absolutely. really Stunning. so well detailed, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's a funny story because we actually, they, they actually did a show with us uh, about a month and a half ago called The Dragon King, okay. mm -hmm. which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was a Chinese story. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. um, and we had um, we had a 
a f- puppetry theater company coming in from Sweden that had visa issues ah, okay. scheduled for this Sunday. Oh, uh, you know, that happened to a Russian dance uh, yeah. in Queens. S- the other day. So we called up Tangle with Marionettes because their show at Flushing Town Hall in January, I think it was, January, February, was so popular we actually sold out one of those ah. family shows. So we called them up. Hey, can you do last minute to fill in for this other company? And they could do it, and they're fantastic. That's so, great. Yeah. So That's we're really a, happy about it. So this is, this is the story of Cinderella in the 18th century, but the, the costumes on the, on the, on the puppets? Which are, Stunning. Yeah. yeah. It's just, um, and you also have an opening for an art reception, right? Is it Grunt? Yes. Grunt. One of your, you have an Australian, you have an artist in residence who's actually Australian or something like yes, that? Yes, I believe so. Elliot Callan is his name. Uh-huh. We have a lot of space grant artists who, who we grant free space in the building to uh, artists who want to develop new work. Wow. And then they present something to the public. That's so this is an, he's from Australia. He's been living in Queens. And this is his artwork about his experiences in Queens and Aussie's experiences in Queens. So I'm obviously, yeah. a terrible well, we lack of rugby, I believe. No koala be bears. Do you think? Good day, like, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's um, not a knife. Shall I bring out the other <laughs> yeah, '90s cliches? <laughs> <laughs> Vegemite. Vegemite sandwiches. Are there any it's going to be. Uh, he's going to be playing Anyways. Men at Work in the back. Yeah, Men at Work in the back. Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee will be there, I think. Oh, um, how do we live? Uh, our beds are burning. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, what was that? That's Midnight Oil. Midnight Oil. There you um, go. So I also want to talk a little bit about <laughs> Sammy. <laughs> Sammy over here, by the way, it's spelled Bro, S-A-M-I, in case right. you guys didn't know that, uh, it, which is short for Samir. Right? No, it's just Sammy. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, Samir's a different name. Have you ever heard of Sammy Kedra? He's a really good soccer player, born in Germany, but his parents are Algerian. But he, he he's his actually name is Samir. Samir. So maybe some But everyone calls Samir. him Sammy with, yeah. uh, the way you spell it. But Sammy's another name. Oh, it's a different okay. name. On its own. Okay, so what does Sammy, S-A-M-I, does that translate into English? Uh, it does. Uh, people don't usually ask me that, but... Um, so <laughs> Sami in, in Arabic is the root word, is the root of the word Semitic, but it also means uh-huh. noble or, or high. So oh, it's okay. kind of like, but it's the, you oh. know, because Arabic is a Semitic language, Arabic and Hebrew, so they share it. The word Sami actually literally means either Semitic or it means noble. noble. Because I've heard the, the, the common Arabic first name, it Nabil. Is. Nabil is also noble, right? I think Nabil is. I noble. guess so. So is your middle name Nabil? No. That'd be repetitious. <laughs> um, uh, Sammy is also a, a talented musician who has a group called Zikrayat. Zikrayat. I can't pronounce it. Zikrayat. Tell us a little bit about the group. Um, I've seen you perform uh, live at Queen's Botanical Garden before. That was in 2013. Yes. Yeah. Um, so tell, tell those of us who weren't there, tell them, <laughs> tell them about your band. Sure. So uh, Zikrayat means memories in Arabic. And uh, we named the group because that way because we're, we're taking a lot of repertory that's been forgotten. So we're trying to remember that repertory. Like historic music. Historic, yeah. although for us, histor- history isn't that far back. So okay. we're, we're focused a lot on uh, mid-20th century Egyptian music, especially from movie musicals. So uh, a lot of people may have heard of Bollywood and may be aware that in India they produce a lot of movie musicals, but that was actually true in Cairo as well. So okay. Egypt was a major center of a movie music, music yeah. of music and yeah. movie musicals. Um, I mean, Cairo in Egypt was a major center of music from the Arab world, but the movie musicals were very popular in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So our group takes a lot of repertory from that period. Uh, it's a, it's also a period when there's a lot of uh, fantastic, uh, what we know as belly dance. Yeah, I was um, going to say you have belly dancers. Yeah, so we have dancers with us, and they're they're performing a lot of this this period when there was fantastic music and fantastic dance in the in the movies at the you know at the same time. And that that was that in that era in the 1950s, Cairo was really the center of the Arab world for media. So it was like New York City plus Hollywood. It's right. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And the, yeah, the Cairo was the center, of, just the way that Mexico is the center of Spanish-speaking yeah, language. Yeah. And, but yeah. Um, fa- the, uh, sorry, just yep. quick. The music you guys are taking from that time period, are you reinterpreting it, or is it just sort of like a shot-for-shot shot remake, so to speak? Well, you know, I mean, I guess I would say it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, we definitely, a lot of the stuff that we're taking is uh, things that might be orchestral. Right. So they have big you know movie film ensembles and we're playing with a six-piece ensemble right so you do your best so we do well (laughs) no we kind of rearrange it for the group as it is and it's it's like the the ensemble that we have is more the traditional 
uh, classical ensemble in terms of its ensemble design uh, with an extra drum so that we can accommodate belly dancers. So we have, a, we have an ensemble, the design that can accommodate sort of your belly dance club repertory, the Egyptian film repertory, and some of the more classical vocal repertory. But we're, we're all ad adapting it for that sort of ensemble. Nice. Um, in some cases, we'll, we'll take the songs and we'll change them in some ways. In other ways, we're trying to be fairly strict and traditional. But the other thing to know about, about Arabic music in general is you can never really perform the same song in the same way twice because there's a, an expectation, uh, a lot like jazz, that when you're performing, you're that, always yeah. improvising. So even when you're following a strict melody, you're performing a little bit differently every time. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, and then yeah, there's right. a lot of imp like straight up improvisation that's even built within the melody. So there might be like, you know, you'll do the melody similarly, the, the singer might sing a little differently or whatever, but then there might be a break where there's just a whole improvisation. So wow. everything ends up being different every if time. you guys have mandatory guitar solo. Of like <laughs> yes, except that they're good here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I think that's all from us, yeah, but oh, wait, we um, want to leave you with, oh, okay, yeah. well, all right, we did this last week, but remember, May 1st is Queen's Taste right. at the New York Hall of Science, 6 to 9. We have 61 tables, uh, including just, about, you know, a whole, probably 15 different cuisines, a whole bunch of local breweries are going to be there, specialty foods, desserts, everything is at thequeenstaste.com. Mm -hmm. Make sure you buy your tickets. That's it's right. going to be a fantastic event. I, it's what I, it's my event that I organize every year. Uh, it's my seventh, I believe. And Daily News is a media sponsor. And the Daily sponsor. News is a media sponsor. And if you want, there's also the World's Fair, spelled F-A-R-E, going on this week. Uh, no, 28th next. and 29th. Oh, okay, good. Not so this we'll Saturday, but that. next Saturday. We'll, right, talk, we'll talk about, about it that next later. Time. We want to leave you with, Sammy's going to play a little uh, violin for us, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, Please, thank you for, for listening. Everything that we talk about is correct on the website. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is itsinqueens.com. Plus, I'll be tweeting about all of this uh, with the hashtag or the, or the Instagram page and the Twitter page, It's in Queens. Um, now, Sammy, which is not Samir, but Sammy, uh, is going to play <laughs> violin. Sure. Why don't I? We don't, no one wants to see us while we. Shall we move the. Do whatever. You? All right. Well, we're going to. He can, oh, just, he can okay. deal with it. It's fine. All right. Sammy, so, yeah. Tell us. Take it away. Yeah, yeah. So so what I didn't say when we were talking about the global mashups is that my ensemble Zikrayat is actually the Egyptian band in the global mashup on May 4th. But Sammy, Egypt aren't, meets aren't Haiti. Are you Palestinian? I am. Yeah. Okay. But I well, lived in... Speaking. Yeah, I lived yeah. in... Well, I mean, it's like saying that I'm Palestinian and playing Egyptian music is like saying that I'm from, uh, you know, I'm from... From Alabama from a, and I went to you know <laughs> yeah. or I went to New York City and I played the music there you know yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I did live in Egypt and I studied music oh, there and okay. and in Syria as well so um, yeah so I'm gonna just do a little bit of something from a from a from a tune from 1955 that was um, that was taken by a a Brooklyn-based uh, rapper in 2003. Really. Yeah, Jay Z sampled the, this tune oh, for Big it. Pimpin', okay. so oh. it's the original. Okay. <laughs> uh, we kick great it old tune school by here. the singer Abdul Halim Hafiz from from uh, 1955. Egyptian? Egyptian. This is from a film from you know, okay. original tune. Tune called Khusara.
Zikrayat music.com. Z-I-K-R-A-Y-A-T. Yeah. 